Hey everyone, welcome back to Family Tree Support, where we dive deep into the world of family history and genealogy. I'm Andy, and today we're tackling one of the most frustrating parts of tracing your roots, those pesky brick walls. You know, when you've hit a dead end, no records, no clues, and your ancestor's story just stops cold. But here's the game changer, DNA matches. If you've taken a DNA test or are thinking about it, this video is for you. I'll walk you through how to use your matches to smash through those walls step by step. We'll cover the basics, advanced tips, and even a real world example from my own research. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss more genealogy hacks. Let's get started. First things first, what exactly is a genealogy brick wall? It's that point in your family tree where you can't go any further. Maybe the records were destroyed in a fire, your ancestor changed their name, or immigration details are fuzzy. In my experience, these walls often hit around the 1800s or earlier, especially for non-European lineages where documentation is sparse. DNA testing changes all that by connecting you to living relatives who might hold the missing pieces. Sites like Ancestry DNA or 23andMe give you a list of matches, people who share segments of your DNA. The key is turning those matches into actionable clues. Let's break down how DNA matches work. When you get your results, you'll see a list ranked by how much DNA you share, measured in centimorgans or CM for short. Higher CM means a closer relative. Close matches, over 200 CM, these could be first or second cousins. They're goal for recent brick walls. Medium matches, 50 to 200 CM, think third or fourth cousins. Great for pushing back a generation or two. Distant matches, under 50 CM, these are trickier but useful in clusters. Pro tip, don't ignore low CM matches. In my research, a 20 CM match once led me to a shared great-great-grandparent I never knew about. Start by building or uploading your family tree to the testing site. This unlocks shared ancestor hints with a platform suggests common forebears. If no tree, no problem, contact matches politely via the site's messaging system. Say something like, Hi, we share DNA. Do you know anything about your surname online from location? Always respect privacy. Not everyone wants to chat. All right, here's the meat, a step-by-step -step process to use DNA matches effectively. I've used this method to break through walls in my own tree, like tracing an elusive Irish immigrant ancestor. Step 1. Organize your matches. Sort them by shared CM and look for clusters. Tools like Ancestries, Throughlines, or MyHeritage, Theory of Family Relativity could group matches by potential ancestors. Free sites like Geed Match let you upload results from anywhere for advanced analysis. Step 2. Analyze shared matches. This is huge. If you unmatch a shared DNA, check who else you both match. Those shared folks likely descend from the same ancestor. In my experience, mapping out three to five shared matches can pinpoint a common great-grandparent. Use a spreadsheet, column 1 for match name, column 2 for CM, column 3 for their tree details. Step 3. Build mirror trees. If a match has no tree, create a mirror tree by researching their public info and building a mini tree for them. Compare it to yours, bam, you might find a link. Be ethical. Only use public records. Step 4. Triangulate with multiple tests. Test on multiple platforms or encourage relatives to test. Aunt or uncle tests can confirm sides of the family, maternal versus paternal. I found that combining 23andMe's chromosome browser with Ancestry's matches gives a fuller picture. Step 5. Dive into records. Once you have a lead cross-reference with traditional genealogy, use census records, newspapers, or probate docs on sites like FamilySearch.org. DNA isn't magic. It confirms hypotheses. Common pitfalls to avoid. Don't assume all matches are accurate. Endogamy in close-knit communities can inflate CM. And always verify with paper trails. DNA alone isn't proof. 
Let me share a quick story from my experience. I had a brick wall with my great-great-grandmother, born around 1850 in rural Virginia. No birth record, maiden name unknown. DNA showed a 150 cm match with someone whose tree stopped at a similar point. We shared 10 other matches, all pointing to a cluster in the same county. I built a mirror tree for one, found a marriage record linking our lines, and boom, the wall crumbled. It revealed she was adopted, explaining the dead end. Total time? About two weeks of evenings. Your results might vary, but persistence pays off. Quick tips. Privacy first. Review settings on your DNA site. Join Facebook groups like DNA Detectives for help. Free tools. WikiTree for collaborative trees or DNA Painter for chromosome mapping. Budget option. Start with one test around $50 to $100 then upload elsewhere for free. If you're dealing with international ancestors, sites like MyHeritage excel in Europe and beyond. So there you have it. DNA matches are your secret weapon against genealogy brick walls. Give it a try, and you might uncover stories that change how you see your family. If this helped, like the video, drop a comment with your biggest brick wall, and subscribe for more. Check the description for links to resources. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.